Despite the catastrophic debt toll it has inflicted, Israel is losing on the ground and in the court of public opinion. There's no way that this ends that doesn't leave Israel a pariah state with occupation and apartheid on borrowed time, and they know it. So they're doing everything they can. Desperate acts of aggression to provoke a wider conflict with Lebanon, with Iran, with anybody to draw in the US, to save them from the consequences of their own actions. The Houthis have made a humanitarian intervention in the Red Sea in an effort to bring the genocide in Gaza to an end. The Houthis have killed nobody while disrupting shipping in the Red Sea, ships which are facilitating the Israeli genocide. The Israeli regime has killed over 23,000 civilians. Over 10,000 of them are children. So who did the US and the UK attack? No, they didn't attack the Israeli regime because they're supporting the genocide. They attacked the Houthis instead, killing at least six people. So Western powers are prepared to kill people to protect the movement of goods. But the same Western powers kill thousands with sanctions in Iran, in Syria, in Venezuela, preventing the movement of some goods. The Houthis are showing solidarity with the Palestinian people, just like South Africa did in The Hague. But sadly, the EU solidarity is with US empire and the Zionists. Shame on the EU. Thanks, President. Every day now, the mask falls further. On the very same day that the West pet bulb dog Israel was hauled into The Hague to face the charge of genocide in which EU countries are complicit, our so-called like-minded partners, the US and Britain, flout the UN Charter to commit their latest crime of aggression. Illegal, unprovoked, unjustified airstrikes on Yemen. Lawless, barbarous acts to inflame the region and to make worse the catastrophic cost of living crisis being experienced by millions of Europeans. And now some of you actually want to join them. Seriously, with a straight face, people have come in here and said they want to do that in order to uphold international law. The very same international law that a horrified world has watched being trampled into the ruins of Gaza while the EU hands Israel more weapons and cheers on the genocide. The Yemenis have killed no one. 25,000 Palestinians are dead and all you're enraged about is international shipping. It's over. The EU has no moral authority. If you want to sort the situation out, end the genocide. This report claims the EU can play a positive role in preventing diplomacy and tackling frozen conflicts around the world. The past few decades are a dramatic demonstration of how the EU does precisely the opposite. Kosovo, Syria, Nagorno-Karabakh, Ukraine, Israel, Palestine. Just look at the genocide taking place at the moment in Gaza. We haven't time to go back over all the colonial exploits of European powers and the imperialists carving up large parts of the world with complete disregard for the ethnic and religious communities on the ground. But European colonialists did lay the ground for the Israeli settler colonial project and then supported the apartheid state of Israel for over 75 years while they systematically brutalized and butchered the Palestinians. When the Israeli genocide of Gaza began on October 7th, the EU ran out to the defense President von der Leyen and Metzola literally flew out there and pledged the EU support no matter what was to come. You say the EU can limit the spread of conflicts. The Council still hasn't called for a ceasefire. Sadly, the EU is part of the problem. Grazie, Presidente. So we're here today celebrating the EU's great role in preventative diplomacy. What an absolute joke when the truth is that the EU has been seriously active, not in preventative diplomacy, but in preventing diplomacy. We've had two years where the very concept of diplomacy has been smeared as a Russian plot. You've pulled out all of the stops to smash the slightest chance of dialogue in Ukraine. Where was the preventative diplomacy in 2020 and 2021 when at least France and Germany tried to reduce the tensions with Russia, but the EU flung itself behind the US and NATO belligerents? And it's the poor people of Ukraine with its smashed state that is living with the consequences of that. 
Meanwhile, 101 days into the genocide in Gaza, and the EU hasn't even managed to call for a ceasefire. While this report has the audacity to claim that the EU always seeks to reduce the risk of escalation. No, it doesn't. You're fooling nobody. It's time to abandon rampant militarism and stop hurtling down the wrong road of history. This is a war that could have been prevented, a war that could have been stopped as early as April 22. But we didn't want peace, we wanted war. We wanted to promote a US NATO proxy war in the effort to damage Russia. We spent billions of EU taxpayers' money fueling a war that wasn't in our interest and has helped to destroy Ukraine for no good reason. Ukraine wants to recruit a half a million more soldiers for the war. Over 17,000 have been caught and detained by security services while attempting to avoid the draft. Many more have escaped. Zelensky wants to lower the draft age from 27 to 25, as the average age of soldiers breaches 40. There are interviews in the US media where seasoned soldiers say that due to age, alcoholism or illness, less than half the new recruits have any ability or the will to fight. Yuri Lutsenko, a former prosecutor general and the ex-head of the Ministry of Internal Affairs in Ukraine, recently called for the government to tell the truth about the casualty numbers. He said Ukraine was currently losing 30,000 soldiers a month and that half a million had been killed or seriously wounded since the beginning of the invasion. The Spiegel reported last week that Germany doesn't even know where its arms are going once they reach Ukraine. You want to keep military assistance commitments to Ukraine when you know it's an unmitigated disaster and a bloodbath that is refueling. Are you ever going to try and end this slaughter or do you give a damn about the working class Ukrainians that have been thrown into a meat grinder? Come on to yourselves. Thank you, President. It's almost the second anniversary of the war in Ukraine, a war that is now openly acknowledged could have ended in the first few months if the West hadn't vetoed the April 2022 peace deal. Instead, she told Ukraine to fight on, and the result of that is hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians lost four provinces and any hope of independence ever again. Ukraine is trapped in an unwinnable stalemate, and the only way out is to painfully cut its losses. And rather than abandoning your lunacy in the midst of a crushing cost of living crisis, brought on by your breathtaking stupidity, you want the citizens of Europe to cough up more fuel for the fire in military assistance. And you have the audacity to say that that is done to help Ukraine. The only people you're helping are the shareholders in the arms companies. Now, your commitment to ongoing war might be unshakable. Don't expect the citizens of Europe to follow suit. Ye sound like a bunch Please of deluded maniacs. President, despite the catastrophic debt toll it has inflicted, Israel is losing, on the ground and in the court of public opinion. There's no way that this ends that doesn't leave Israel a pariah state with occupation and apartheid on borrowed time, and they know it. So they're doing everything they can, desperate acts of aggression to provoke a wider conflict with Lebanon, with Iran, with anybody to draw in the US, to save them from the consequences of their own actions. And as Yemen shows, Butcher Biden is reporting for duty. With Europe's proud genocide by his side, they are the ones who have enabled the continuation of Israeli terror. Without them, it would already be over. So take note, Butcher Biden. The ancestors of the Ireland that you claim to be from disown you. Keep our country out of your mouth. And as for von der Leyen and genocidal Germany with your words and deeds supporting Israel in the ICJ, not in our name. The people of Europe stand with Palestine and with South Africa. Thank you, President. According to Ursula von der Leyen, India and the EU are vibrant democracies that share fundamental values and common interests. We're actually natural partners, or at least that's what she told Narendra Modi while shaking his hand in New Delhi on one of the many occasions she's met with him in the hopes of lining India up against China and Russia. This is the same Modi whose ultra-nationalist BJP party has presided over intensifying ethnic tensions and genocidal massacres. 
who was banned from the United States in 2002 by the Bush administration for his role in inciting the Gujarat pogrom, which saw hundreds of Muslim girls and women gang raped and torn apart by marauding Hindu nationalists, children force fed petrol and set on fire, games of cricket with people's skulls. That Modi, normalised for a decade by Trump, then Biden, and now our friend in team democracy. One big happy family that also contains Israel and Saudi Arabia. And you wonder why people in Ireland might have a problem in giving up our national foreign policy? You must be joking. It would seem that the great hopes for India as Washington's counterweight to China had been shelved for the moment. India refused to go on board with the Russian sanctions, and the two countries are busy strengthening defence cooperation and trade relations, while it seems the US and China have made some steps towards de-escalation in their trade war. If this was a less significant country, the report would not be tiptoeing around the Russian relations issue, but heaping condemnations and threats. Instead, the report talks about India as one of our most important trade partners, a like-minded democracy that will partner with us to tackle democratic backsliding worldwide. These comments could be taken seriously if Modi's tenure wasn't marked by constant harassment and intimidation of political opposition and crackdowns on free speech and independent media. And the timid comments on the persecution of religious minorities could be taken seriously if the majority of EU leaders didn't spend the past three months facilitating the genocide of Muslims in Gaza by the Israeli terrorists. President, the Minister for Justice in Ireland published a hate crime bill in 2022. If this was already law, the Irish Prime Minister, our Taoiseach, could well be facing a charge of grossly trivialising or denying genocide. In relation to South Africa's case against Israel, the Irish leader said genocide is defined as the deliberate attempt to destroy an entire nation or entire race or to do so in large part. At no point does the Genocide Convention use the phrase in large part. The Convention says in whole or in part. In large part suggests it is necessary to intend to destroy a sizable majority of a group for the threshold of genocide to be reached. The Taoiseach also asked if the Hamas attack on October 7th was not also a genocide. He questioned the indisputable fact that Israel is committing genocide while offering as an alternative an utterly bizarre example for which there is no case before any international court. The Irish leader has undermined the scope of the Genocide Convention and trivialised Israeli genocide. He does not speak for the people of Ireland. Thank you, Sean President. In the past few months, we've seen Palestinian solidarity decried as hate speech. We've seen claims of anti-Semitism being used to downplay the slaughter of innocents in Gaza and to cover up for the legitimate criticism of Zionism. And with all of this raging in the background, the EU decides to stomp onto the scene with plans to criminalise hate speech. And the problem with that is, do we trust the EU to define hate speech? And do we trust them to ensure that it won't be used to criminalise legitimate political speech and action? And I have to say, I don't. This has all the hallmarks of another clumsy and counterproductive neoliberal response to a social problem. It's cheaper to criminalise hate speech than to fund and focus on the strategies that might foster tolerance. It's a gimmick to allow politicians to pretend to care about minorities and racism and so on, while doing nothing to protect them, doing nothing to address the structural issues that lead to hate and intolerance in the first place. Structural issues which include centrist politicians dog whistling about migration. So for me, I think once again, I don't trust von der Leyen's commission to police my speech. This report starts by claiming the EU is founded on the values of respect for human dignity, freedom, democracy and equality, the rule of law and human rights, and that these values should be shared and upheld and actively promoted by the EU and the Member States in their internal and external actions. And then you think of the ethnic cleansing in Gaza, the murder of 10,000 children in Gaza by the genocidal Israeli regime in just 100 days. The EU Council has not even called for a ceasefire. The Germans are not only defending the Israelis from the charge of genocide at the International Court of Justice, 
they have boosted our arm sales to Israel tenfold. Ye cannot carry on talking absolute nonsense about EU values while you're drenched in the blood of Palestinian children. The behavior of EU states since October 7th is utterly incompatible with the notion of humanity, let alone respect for human rights. Thanks, President. There's a lot that's really good in this report, but I had to reluctantly abstain on it because it legitimizes the use of spyware against journalists. Now, the threat to media freedoms are deeply troubling, and we have to do a lot more. But we only ever talk about certain kinds of threats to media freedom. We never acknowledge the others, the hard limits that our politics and our culture puts on its freedom. Look at how our media has covered Israel's genocidal assault on Gaza. If the media isn't uncritically repeating Israel's blatant lies, it's tying itself up in knots to avoid exposing them for what they are. It relentlessly downplays Israeli genocide, berates grieving Palestinians for not condemning Hamas enough. Israelis are killed by bloodthirsty Palestinians, while Israeli bullets find their way into the heads of Palestinian children. Our media gives Israelis names, Palestinians are statistics. 75 years of murder is wiped away. The 7th of October came from nowhere. Every journalist knows the rules of the game and they follow them. What kind of media freedom is this? Thanks, President. This motion calls on Hungary to behave better and condemns the reported systematic discriminatory practices against academia, journalists, political parties and civil society. It's a pity the EU doesn't apply the same standards to all equally. Ukraine, a country where corruption is manifest on an unprecedented scale, but which has its membership to the EU fast-tracked. In 2021, the European Court of Auditors issued a report entitled Reducing Grand Corruption in Ukraine. The title speaks for itself. The report found that corruption in Ukraine is based on informal connections between government officials, members of parliament, prosecutors, judges, law enforcement agencies, managers of state-owned enterprises, and politically connected individuals and companies. And we're talking about academia problems and journalistic problems with Hungary's behaviour. What about Julian Assange? How come the EU doesn't give a damn about Julian Assange? Academia. There's uh, people working in academia in Europe losing their jobs because they're not supporting the genocide uh, in Gaza. I mean, the, the lack of consistency in the EU is soul destroying. Dating now. Dained on this motion because it's the same old familiar dance. Hungry blackmails the Commission, Commission blackmails Hungary. No doubt they'll cut another dirty deal at some stage and the Commission will trade away Hungarian minority rights and judicial independence, all for a few billion to backstop what they call their strategic interests in Ukraine. The rule of law is really just another weapon in the hands of this so-called geopolitical commission. And this type of horse trading, of course there's problems in Hungary and in many other areas as well, but this type of horse trading certainly doesn't help. But for the EU's war zealots, the people who stake their political careers on deterring peace in Ukraine, who cares? But reality is catching up with you. The United States is rapidly losing interest in the proxy war it provoked and maintained, just as it always does. Europe will be left picking up its pieces, just like it always is. It's not too late for Europe to play a constructive role in what comes next for Ukraine, but as long as Frau Genocide is at the helm, constructiveness is the last thing we can hope for. Mm -hmm.